Hey, Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So today we're going to go ahead and open up Man at Arms. Arms. So let's go ahead and open them up and check them out. Now, one thing I noticed is this Man at Arms has a mustache. And we saw in the original toys, they did not have a mustache. Now, I'm not going to do a huge comparison of all the toys throughout all time. On this one, we're just going to open them up and show the cool articulation and how great he is. Here's the back of the box and the cool artwork and other figures in the series. And you can see it shows he's got swivel parts and everything else. So let's go ahead and open and check him out. Now, later today, we have another live video feed where we're going to try to put the classics into, or not the classics, the origins into all these classic vehicles and see how they fit. Because someone asked me yesterday, hey, can you put them in the vehicles and let us know how they work? So, that will be later tonight. We'll have a live video feed, and I will try the Super 7. I found a Super 7 head, and it's different than the Mattel one. It actually looks like it will fit better into uh, Origin Skeletor during the live feed tonight. So you guys will get a chance to see both of those. Anyway, back to Man at Arms. So here is Man at Arms. And uh, this one brought me, for some reason, the most nostalgia. When I was a kid, I was really sick one time. I was sick for like three days straight and I couldn't hardly wake up. And my mom, she came in the room and asked me, said she's going to the commissary, is there anything she can get for me? The commissary is a military store like Costco. And uh, I grabbed one of the back of my box art boxes and I showed her the back and I circled man at arms on one and many faces on the next. And she came back and she brought me Man at Arms and Manny Faces from the commissary, and it was so cool. I woke up, I felt fine because I had some cool new toys, and I remember just playing all day long with those two. Great memories. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, crack this guy open. Let's take a look at what he has. And he does come with another comic book, and we'll see if it's the variant or not, or if it's the regular comic. I'm guessing it's probably the regular one. I'm thinking all the variants are probably long gone. Let's take a look here, and yep, looks like it's the same. I did not get the variant one, so I guess I'll keep looking. If anybody does the variant one, find me on Facebook and uh, send me a picture of it. I'm curious to see what it actually looks like. That'd be cool to see. I lost my scissors. Hold on, I'll be back in a moment. For you, it'll be a, just a split second. All right, I'm back now. I got my scissors. Let's go ahead and uh, cut this tie right here so I can get him out of there. And he comes with some accessories, which we expect to be his armor and stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. And again, I'm very careful to not accidentally cut the stuff inside the bag. And it looks like we have three pieces of armor and his giant club bat. So there we go. So, which is kind of cool, they actually made these two separate pieces. Oops. Just like the classics were, so that they can actually articulate instead of being one solid piece like the man arms he got as a kid. But then again, his arm when he was a kid didn't articulate, so it didn't matter. Now, I always wish they would have just stuck in the other arm piece. Um, I know that the original toy didn't have it, but the cartoon did. And as a kid watching the cartoon, it was like, what? Why doesn't mine have to? And so of course, you know, there was no way to get to back then. Um, and so you had to try to create your own or figure something out or just deal with it. Um, there's one guy I saw online, he actually used uh, uh, Manny's, Manny faces and repainted his arms to give it the look like he had two armors on both arms. So that's kind of cool. There we go. There's the first piece. Now his head is really flopsy-mopsy. Hopefully I can fix that later with some, some hot water or something. I'll see. I'll take it off later and take a look at it. I'm afraid I might break the neck peg by pulling it out the way it is because there's something not right about that. And then this one. There we go. And if your neck peg is loose on yours, let me know. Because I'm curious to see 
if anybody else has any issues too, the same issues I'm coming across. All right, so there we have his, uh, oh, there we go, let's get the articulation working. And you can see his fingers were also mangled in the package just like He-Man's were. That's just so crazy about his head. Weird. I guess I'll pull it off, take a look. Yeah, it does have kind of a weird little double seam going on inside there. I'll do some more investigation so I can figure out what's going on with this one. And they're starting to, to get cheap on the plastic like they did with classics. I remember they started taking the chin out of there all the time just to save that little piece of plastic. And it's like, why? Why do that? Why not just give us the whole thing filled in? Does it really save that much? I guess if you produce thousands and thousands of figures, it would. All right, let's put his leg piece on. Now what's nice is these are really soft rubber, so it's really easy to do. So that's the cool part about this. Fit, fit. There we go. All right, I guess I'll stick his head back on now. Oh, that is a little better. Oh, maybe not. I'll have to heat it up and see if I can try to fix it a little bit from heating it up and we'll see. Now what's cool, like I mentioned last night, is it actually has a, a rim of black hair right around here. Now when I was a kid they had the um the they had the hair showing, but it was the same color as the helmet. And I always imagined his hair would be brown underneath there. And I think one time I did paint one brown when I was younger. So I'm kind of surprised his hair is so black on here, but I think even in the classics, the ponytail one has brown hair. All right, so there he is, fully assembled with all his armor on, ready for battle. Now, I think the theory is when he's battling, he has this side well armored. Ah, he has this side well armored so that when a bad guy is coming to attack from this angle, it's like his shield blocking him completely. And then he comes across with his right and then slams into him and knocks him down. And having the right arm unarmored gives his right arm more mobility because he's not carrying that heavy armor around. So that's kind of the idea. His man at arms have to fight from the side and doesn't get kicked in the shin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then, of course, he'll be able to uh, then fight, you know. Oh, I was off camera. Let's do that again. <laughs> you know, it would be a fun feature if they would have added some sort of way to make the, the waist springable because that was such a fun feature. When I was a kid, not only is the waist springable, you know, so you could twist it and spring, but also the rubber band in the legs would allow you to take the leg and pull it back and release it and it would then sling forward. And so I'd also use that. That's probably why rubber bands on my figures always had lo were always loose because I was using them to use the legs as weapons to kick people. So again, blocks his armor on this side, can't get kicked in the shin, and then he comes across with the right and oh, nail skeletor and there you go. This guy's club, looks like it's a Cheeto. And that's about it. Oh, quick articulation, uh, just like the others, ankle, swivel, up here, knee, hip, pulls apart, I'm sure, Ooh, and he does. And, uh, Shoulder, elbow, lots of hand, floppy, floppy head, and that's about it. Oh, let's do some cool designs. Ugh. Oh, yeah. He's styling now. You know what? I like his boots. His boots would be great for the 2000 XT man. I may have to get another man at arms just to steal his boots for the 2000 X He-Man that I made because they are a darker brown and that's way better. All right, man at arms, I'm getting a second one of you just to steal your boots. Sorry, man. You may, this one may get the black boots until I get another man at arms. Let's see, where are those black boots? There they are. Let's see what he looks like with these black boots on. Mm. 
Next week, I will be doing a Tila knee fix. So look out for that. I'm waiting for some stuff to come from Amazon. Some giant trays. You know, that doesn't look half bad anyway. It gives a more of an army look anyway. It'd be once covered up anyway. Until I get my next man at arms, you're going to be a black booted man at arms. Oh, okay, let's find that 2000 XT man I'm working on. Uh, and try those boots on. I guess I don't need these O-rings anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh. So this will be the first one I use for my custom class when I go through how to make customs. That will be cool. I am excited. He is now ready. I will break you. Oh, wait. Wrong line. Same guy. All right, it's been about five or 10 minutes since I just finished the last video. And what I've did is I've tightened his head up. Um, I pulled it apart to look at it again, and I found out it was the peg that was super loose. And as I rotated, it'd be tight, loose, tight, loose, tight, loose. So right inside there, you can see that or not, I put one drop of super glue in there and kind of smeared it around. And I did not use the gel glue, I used the ultra control or the ultra liquid control glue. And uh, when you do that, you need to keep moving it and moving it and moving it. It'll feel really loose at first. Spin, keep spinning it around and keep moving it. Do not stop moving it. The second you stop, it's going to freeze and it's, it'll be done. So keep moving it. And then you'll feel it starting to tighten up as you're moving it. Right when you start to feel it tighten up, run it under cold water and keep moving it. Um, that will harden the glue instantly and it'll be done. And that way they don't have glue dripping down inside the figure and causing all kinds of problems. So now I got this nice and stiff. I did heat his head up and popped it on there as well to give it a nice solid connection. And now his head actually does stay. It doesn't flop so much around just like it's supposed to. So there you go. That's a really quick fix. Whoop. And uh, now his head's no longer flopsy-mopsy. So you don't have to wait until tonight to see the answer. But I, for those of you that already turned out, well... Of course, you won't be here anymore listening to me jabber. I'm still going to cover it again tonight in the live, just in case you might, in case somebody shut it off too soon. All right, you guys, I should have fixed his hand too. What was I thinking? Oh, anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next video. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Make yourself a black booted man at arms while you're at it. I think that actually looks cooler. Heck, he's got black hair, so why not? And hopefully I fix his head. I'm going to throw his head in hot water. I'll let you know tonight on the live update whether the hot water worked or not. And I'll show you the results. All right, you guys. Uh, again, see you guys tonight. Live video feed. Um, 6 Pacific time. 6 p.m. right about that time. And we will try out all of these vehicles with the Origins and Skeletor's new head. And an update on his head. Thanks, you guys. Bye now.